So let's start uh, another group, uh, a mediumship literature group. We are reading The Gospel According with Spiritism by Alan Kardec. And everybody is welcome to join us. Uh, you can uh, contact me through Revenant uh, on Facebook, my page Revenant on Facebook, or my website, Revenant.world. Everybody is welcome to join us. It's free of charge. and. Um, you're welcome to join us uh, in our live uh, for discussions and um, and reading together. So let's do our initial prayer and we can start reading. Dear God, thank you very much for this day, for your unconditional love, for your support, your strength and your wisdom guiding us through every moment of our lives, either challenges or positive uh, moments but we know that every moment regardless of our own judgment if they are good or bad they contribute to our growth and our progress so we thank you for that and we ask for your wisdom and your strength and your guidance to help us to grow and face every uh, day um, in every circumstance and we ask you to help us today to uh, understand the things we need to learn through this reading of the chapel according with uh, of the gospel according with spiritism help us to open our minds and our hearts to absorb and to understand the things we need to learn and um, also help the ones that are watching us uh, from home uh, for them also to receive wisdom and guidance and, and comfort from you through these readings. Thank you very much. Amen. Okay, so we are going to continue where we stopped, which is chapter 25 of the Gospel According with Spiritism by Alan Kardec. Who would like to start reading? I'll mind. Thank you. <coughs> oh, you have a cough? No. <laughs> Just a, uh, yeah, it's my <laughs> natural state. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for reading. <clears throat> it called in Montreal? Uh, I don't know. Every time I catch a little something, it just lives on and within me for months. <laughs> so I guess those are the remnants of COVID. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I hope you're feeling better. Happy to that, either that or I just have allergies all the time, mm -hmm. which could probably mm -hmm. most likely be it. Mm -hmm. Sounds more like it. Yeah. yeah. Chapter 25, Seek and You Will Find. If you help yourself, then heaven will come to your aid. Behold the fowls of the air. Provide not gold in your purse. If you help yourself, then heaven will come to your aid. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that ask it, receive it. And that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be opened. Or what man is there for you, of you, whom if his son ash breed, will he give him a stone? Or if he ash a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he, the, if he then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much shall, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Matthew 7, 7, 11. <clears throat> From an early point of view, the maxim seek and y'all shall 
you shall find is the same as that other one. Help yourself and the heavens will come to your aid. This is the base of the law of work and consequently the law of progress. Since progress is a child of work, seeing that this puts into action the force of intelligence. During mankind's infancy, he only used his intelligence in seeking food and as a means of protection against the climate and defending himself from his enemies. However, God has given man something more than he gave to animals, which is an incessant desire to better himself. It is this desire which impels him to seek out the best ways of improving his position in life, which duly leads him to make discoveries, to invent things, and to perfect the sciences because it is science that gives him what he lacks. Through man's research, his, his intelligence heightens his moral depurate. The needs of the body give way to, to those of the spirit. After material nourishment, man needs spiritual nourishment. This is how he passes from savagery to civilization. But the amount of progress achieved by each person during a single lifetime is very small indeed. In most cases, even imperceptible. How then could humanity progress without pre-existence and the re-existence of the soul? If the souls who daily leave the earth were never to return, then humanity would be constantly renewing itself with primitive elements, having everything still to do and learn. There would be no reason why man should be more advanced today than he was during the first epochs of the world, because at each birth, all intellectual work would have to recommence. On the other end, by returning with the degree of progress realized and acquiring something more each time, the soul then gradually passes from the barbaric state to that of the materialistic civilization and then, and then on to one of moral civilization. <clears throat> if God had exempted man from bodily work, his limbs would have withered. If he had exempted him from intellectual work, then his spirit would have remained in a state of infancy or mere animal instinct. This is why he made work a necessity by saying, seek and you shall find, work and you shall produce. In this way, you are the product of your work. You receive the merit of it and a recompense in accordance with what has been done. It is by virtue of that principle that the spirits do not help in sparing men the work of research by bringing them discoveries and inventions prepared and ready to use in such a way that they would have nothing to do but accept what was put into their hands without any inconvenience whatsoever, nor even to bend down and pick it up, nor yet to think about it. If things were like that, then the laziest could enrich themselves and the most ignorant could become wise at the cost of no effort. And both would have merits attributed to them for things they had not done. Note, the spirits do not come to exempt men from the law of work, but only to show him the goal to be reached and the pathways that lead there. By saying, walk and you will get there. You will find your path strewn with stones look upon them and then move them we will give you the necessary strength if you care to utilize it see the medium's book chapter 26 item 2 and 91 onwards from the moral point of view these words of jesus signify that if we ask for the light which will show us the way it will be given and we ask for strength to resist evil, we shall receive it. If we ask for the assistance of the good spirits, then they will come to accompany us. And as did the angel of Tobias, they will guide us. If we ask for good counsel, it will not be refused. If we knock on his door, it will be opened. But we must ask with sincerity, faith, confidence, and fervor. We must present ourselves with humility and not with arrogance, or else we will be abandoned to our own strength and the falls taken will be punishment for our pride. 
then this is then what is meant by the word seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened <clears throat> Uh, any comments or questions about this initial part? <clears throat> what did you understood? I've, I've never heard the law of work and the law of progress. I like that. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's the first time I've heard it. Interesting, right? Yeah. It, it puts, puts a lot of things in perspective. Just, just the title by itself. I know, right? It's very self-explanatory. Self-explanatory, right? Exactly. Yeah, there's many uh, divine or na natural laws that we don't really talk about, uh, and those are some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so, what uh, what do you understand? for people that's at home, uh, what do you understand by the law of labor and law of progress? I, if you help yourself and you have more chance that um, you're gonna get some divine help. I mean, we learned that a long time ago and we have an expression in French <laughs> too as well, Catherine probably knows about. And to I le ciel t'aidera. Exactly. <laughs> help yourself and uh, and and spirits shall help you too. Yeah. It's like your effort is not is re your effort is rewarded. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's not wonderful. Some sometimes we uh, <laughs> we all face difficulties right in life as human beings, one way or the other, or one moment or the other. Our lives here are not easy. We need to work to make money, we need to to work to pro progress, we need to work to take care of ourselves, to take care of our family, or uh, to deal with our own demons inside of us. And there's so much, right? We need to conquer as human beings. And sometimes natural uh, disasters, sometimes uh, you know, loss of loved ones, pain and and diseases. Like Katie was talking about the COVID, we are going through like for two years, we are going through this right terrible moment uh, in all over the world, uh, dealing with this uh, pandemics. So there's so much we need to do um, in every day of our lives. And but uh, and sometimes people think a, a question like, why you need to suffer so much, right? Why we need to go through the, through those things? Why me? Sometimes people uh, ask, right? Why me? Why I need to go through this heartache, uh, whatever they are. Uh, it's exactly because of that we need to work. If we are giving uh, from the beginning everything ready, right? If we, uh, as, let's say a baby, a baby is born and they never face obstacles, they never fall when they try to, to walk, uh, they never uh, have needs, so they, need to, they don't need to uh, learn how to speak, to communicate their needs. Um, if they never go through difficulties, they don't develop. We see this in psychology, and it's the same thing with us, right? As human beings, as adults, uh, regardless of our age, we, the obstacles help us to grow is the motivation for us to grow so our job is to work on ourselves to work to do whatever we need to do to go through whatever circumstance we are going through in our lives the best way possible remembering everything else we have learned before right love and compassion above all and then when we put the effort and we ask for help because they are asked, they are talking about this as well, right? In this, this uh, passage, uh, when we ask for help, the help comes. If we, if we help ourselves, if we do our part and we ask for help, the spirits help us. But we need to, uh, to work first, right? We need to do our part because if you just stay sitting and not developing ourselves not putting any effort to, to grow, and he asks for help to alleviate our pain, it is not gonna happen because 
that's part of life. It's, the pain is for, for us to grow. It's the same thing as when the baby falls. They learn what it takes to, to keep the balance. If they never fall, they are not going to understand how, what they need to do with their little muscles in order to keep the balance, right? Uh, so it's the same thing with us. So sometimes we fall, sometimes we have heartaches, but then we is an opportunity for us to learn, okay, which muscle I need to develop that I didn't develop yet, which kind of uh, posture or attitude I need to, to have in order to succeed next time. And, and this way we grow. But we, when we do this with grace, understanding how the process is, that everything contributes to our progress, everything becomes easier because we know, okay, I just fell learning how to walk. I'm just going to get up and go. And so when we learn with the babies, we are much better off to face the obstacles in our lives. And it's very, it's very beautiful to see how uh, what they say about the, um, you know, how much help we have, but that we also need to ask, right? And uh, and we do when we do when we do our part and we ask for help, the the help always comes and our journey becomes easier and more prosperous as well, because then everything's good. We are doing our part, just gonna go to the next grade. You're gonna, <laughs> right? Instead of repeating. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, somebody else wants to take over, so Katya can rest. <laughs> well, I'll go if you want. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Behold the fowls of the air. Six. Whoa. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart up be also. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It is not life more, is not the life more than meat and the body more than clothing? Behold, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much better than that than they which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature and why take thought for clothes consider the lilies of the field how they grow they do not work neither do they spin and yet i say to you that even Solomon in all his glory <clears throat> was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need for all of these things. <clears throat> but seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil therefore. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 and 25 to 34. Seven. In a literal, literal translation, these words would be a denial of all providence, of all work, and consequently of all progress. 
with this kind of principle, humanity would be limited to waiting passively while all physical and intellectual strengths remain inactive. If such were the, nor the normal conditions on earth, then human beings would never have left the primitive state. <clears throat> if this condition were to become law today, then it would only remain to live in total idleness. This could not have been the thought of Jesus since this would be a contradiction of what he has, had said on other, other occasion and it would also contradict the laws of nature. God created humans without clothes or shelter, but he gave, him, gave them intelligence so as to be able to make them. See chapter 14, item six and chapter 25, item two. Therefore, these were, therefore these words must not be seen as anything more than the poetical, poetical allegory of providence that, that never abandons those who put their confidence in it, but wishes that all work in their turn. If providence does not always come in the form of material help, then it inspires those ideas from which it found the means of getting out of difficulty. See chapter 27, item eight. God understands all our, necess our necessities and pro provides for them when it is necessary. Nevertheless, humans are insatiable in their desires and do not always know how to be content with what they have. Possessing what is necessary is not enough for them. They want what is superfluous. Then providence leaves, leaves them to themselves. Many times they become unhappy through their own fault and for, not, for having paid no attention to the voice of the conscience which had warned them. In these cases, the Lord lets them suffer the consequences so it may serve as a lesson for the future. See chapter five, item four, eight. The earth will produ produce sufficient, will produce sufficient to feed all of its inhabitants. When people discover how to administer the benefits that it offers according to the laws of justice, charity and love for one's neighbor. <clears throat> when fraternity reigns amongst all people as it does amongst the providence of any country, then the monetary, the moment, the momentary superfluity of the one will overcome the insufficiency of another and everyone will have what is necessary. Then a rich person will consider themselves as someone who possesses a great number of seeds. If they scatter them, they will produce a thousandfold for that person and enough for others as well. However, if they eat all the seeds by themselves and waste them or allow the surplus they left to be lost, nothing will have been produced and there will not be enough for everyone. If they hoard the seeds in their barns, then the maggots will devour them. This is the way Jesus said, do not accumulate treasures on earth because they are perishable, but accumulate them in heaven where they are eternal. In other words, do not give material possessions more importance than the spiritual ones. You know how to sacrifice the former for, former for the latter. See chapter 16, item seven onwards. Charity and fraternity cannot be decreed by law. If they are not in the heart, then selfishness will always stifle them. It is up to spiritism to see that they penetrate the heart. Do not worry about possessing gold. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor a script, nor a script for your journey, neither two, two coats, neither shoes, nor yet stays, for the worker is worthy of his meat. And into whoever, whosoever, I mean, and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who is who it is worthy and where abide till you leave. And when you go into the house, salute it, 
and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever who shall whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Truly I say to you, it shall be tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Matthew 10, 9 through 15, 11. <clears throat> These words that Jesus directed to his apostles when he sent to them to announce the good news for the first time were nothing unusual in those days. They were in accordance with the patriarchal customs of the Orient where the traveler was always made welcome in the tent. But then in those days, travelers were very rare indeed. Among modern people, the development of travel has created new customs, very distant lands where the great movement has not yet penetrated are the only places to conserve the customs of ancient times. If Jesus were returned today, he, would, he could no longer tell his apostles to put themselves on the road without provisions. Apart from their actual meaning, these words hold a very profound moral sense. In proffering them, Jesus was teaching his disciples to have confidence in providence. What is more, by having nothing, there could, there could not cause covetedness amongst those who received them. This was a way to distinguish those who were selfish from those who were charitable. This is why he told them, find out who is worthy to put you up, or rather who is sufficiently generous to clothe a traveler who has nothing with which to pay. These are the people who will be worthy to receive your words and who will be recognizable by their charity. With regard to those who carried, who cared neither to receive them nor to listen to them, did he tell his disciples that they should curse them, that they should impose a teaching upon them or that they should use violence and force to convert them? No. He simply told them to go away and seek others who were willing to listen. Today's spiritism says the same thing to its followers. Do not violate any consequences, consciousness. Do not force anyone to leave their faith in order to adopt yours. Do not excommunicate those who do not think as you do. Welcome all who come to join you and leave in peace all those who were repelled by your ideas. Remind yourselves for, of the words of Christ. In other times, the heavens were taken over by violence, but today they had taken over by mildness. See chapter four, items 10 and 11. <clears throat> okay. Any questions or comments? Mm. What did you understood? Sure. They speak a lot about how <clears throat> we tend to uh, have different customs and to judge people differently by their morals. So, so I think they're just kind of encouraging us to 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 understand that uh, that basically <laughs> they're, they're just kind of like being critical of materialistic values a little bit not not diminishing the fact that you know we still need to feed ourselves or to care for ourselves if we're if we have to but but yeah, it like like they're they're just encouraging. I, I'm not sure I understand the 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 moral, like because because they kind of explain the the saying and then they kind of go well, 
nowadays it wouldn't work like that you know so so they kind of explain like oh you sh like back in the days the apostles didn't have to carry gold or whatever and and you could judge a good samaritan's heart by how he would he would kind of have people over mm -hmm. because it was pretty rare that people would ask for this but but uh, yeah I'm, I'm just a yeah he, historically the, the this the gospel the gospels uh from the bible were written uh in a time of Jesus and in the beginning of the, Christ, the christianity right so at that time uh the christians were following jesus and following Jesus' teachings, and they were spreading the world. They are helping, uh, you know, to communicate um, his uh, gospels and his uh, teachings. Um, and there was no infrastructure. There was no uh, really a church per se. They 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 were common people, like most followers of Jesus in the beginning were common people. And sometimes uh, for them to go and to city to city to uh, to help the, uh, to spread the world, and sometimes they were being persecuted. And that's the most important thing. They were being persecuted by the Romans and the Jewish at, at that time. Uh, the Jewish didn't have much power per se, political power, but they had influence over the the romans um who who had the political and military power um, so they were being persecuted and killed the same way that jesus was killed so they had to spread and, and look for asylum and look for uh you know other places to live and as they are going they are they are sharing their experiences and what they believe and stuff and that's what they are saying so they they didn't have uh, possessions, but they, they are looking for places to stay sometimes, uh, based on the help and goodwill of people because they didn't have money to pay. And this, this way they could survive as, uh, in, uh, as, uh, refugees. So, and then they are, they are explaining, okay, nowadays we are not encouraging you to do that because you don't need to, if, if you don't need to, right? It's not, it's not the fact that you have to uh, be like nomads and go and, you know, uh, knock in people's houses and not have uh, any, your, your own means to survive. It's not the, the, it's not the point here. The point is that when we need and when we ask, if people don't give, it's okay. It's okay. Just go away because God's going to provide in the beginning. They had, they had this kind of a need, basic needs of material help from others because they were refugees. And, it, but for those who didn't give to them, they, uh, Jesus and, and the disciples were encouraged to don't get mad and don't enforce your truth on them, anyone, because mm -hmm. we need to respect people's point of view and people's differences. But nowadays, what they are saying is, is exactly uh, based on the ideology itself. We see a lot of Christians and even other religions too, right? There's uh, religion wars from many centuries, right? And still to this day, people fight, oh, the Muslims are terrorists or the blah, blah, blah. And the spiritualists are people from devil and, and then Catholics and pro against Protestants or, you know, there's all this war and people pretending to be better than others. Uh, and what Jesus was saying uh, and, and the spirits are saying is like, listen, this is absolutely makes no sense we we need to you need to live your truth you need to live your progress your own way if you if that those beliefs those things make sense to you helps you to grow go uh, very good for you and do uh, your part but don't impose your truth uh, on anyone 
your beliefs or your ideology, your religion, anything, uh, your pol political views, don't impose this on anyone because this is not good. Our job is to take care of ourselves, to grow, to, de to be the best, uh, live, live the, the, our lives the best way we can in love and compassion, help others, period, right? Whatever people believe and not believe, whatever religion they have, whatever uh, culture and ideology is their problem. We need to respect them. So that's that's this this historical context uh, of that passage and uh, what is what does that mean now uh, for us, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Anything else uh, from like what what else you guys understand? They talk about uh, don't be attached to the gold, right? Don't wear yourself, don't worry yourself with the possession of gold. What do you guys understand about that? Don't be materialistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being materialistic is much broader than just money or actual gold, right? Uh, we can be materialistic with uh, our relatives, for example, with our loved ones. If we, our attitude towards them is possessive, if we grab to the, 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 you know, the vanity of whatever we have, even relationships, even uh, even our own religion, even our own thoughts and our own values, if we attach, we get attached to those things in a very vain way, as you know, it, this is this is mine. Nobody's gonna take the, away from me, uh, it, like with an attitude of pride and losing the sight of what our life really is, which is spiritual, right? then we are, we are doing the same mistake as someone that is greedy with material things. Uh, they talked uh, in, in a, a little before, right, in that previous little chapter, uh, passage about uh, the, like when you have uh, many seeds and we spread and, um, you know, different things grow, if we use that to share and to multiply for others and to uh, to uh, make accessible for everyone to have some, then we are doing good, right? We are our wealth is worth it. But if we spread the seed and we want to eat everything by ourselves, um, it doesn't make any sense because uh, you know. Yes, we have the illusion that we have a lot uh, and, and we can conquer some power for a while, but we lose the focus of what real life is because life is, uh, everything in the universe is interrelated. When we create an imbalance by concentration of wealth or concentration of power, concentration of whatever, we, uh, and forgetting the well-being of others, we are creating an imbalance that affects us as well, even when we don't understand. And it's not just about, oh, you're being good, you're a good heart. It's not, it's not that kind of little connotation. It's just the law of nature, right? Um, is if we don't understand that we are part of each other, we are missing an important part of our own existence. And when we do good, when we, when we care for others, it's not just because we are better than others and we are, doing, we are so good, we set such a good heart. No, it's, it's the only way of being. 
when we understand, when we have a bigger consciousness and we understand the reality of life, which is spiritual, right? Um, and like quantum physics is there nowadays to help us to understand that, right? It's just, it's just science nowadays. It's not just like a moral ideology. Quantum physics came, come, is coming to prove us scientifically what that means. And it's the same thing as when we learned in middle school, uh, these things about ecosystem, right? When we kind of, uh, one species is out of balance or is both extinct or is too, uh, have too many of that species, the whole system gets messed up. Right, we, we all learned that in middle school. Uh, so it's physics. The same way that happens with, in biology, it happens with the universe in general. So, and that's, that's what they mean. It's not necessarily that the money is bad or the having uh, uh, pros, uh, pros, uh, pros, uh, pros, prosperity, material prosperity is necessarily bad is how we use it and how uh, is our, our attachment to it and how is our relationship to it if we use it to help others to have condition to help others um we are doing good so there's nothing bad about uh, having wealth uh but we, if we use it just for greediness and you know and our heart is full of hate or our heart is full of uh pride and everything else, then we are not, you know, serving even ourselves. Um, it's really pretty much the law of nature. So any other comments about this chapter? Lately, these chapters are being very short, right? Thank you. In the beginning, they were long. We took like three weeks sometimes to read that chapter. Now, it's, the chapter is really short. Okay. So we can, if you don't have any comments or questions. Mm -hmm. Have anything, David? Just it's like they say, you, you can't take it with you, but if you can't take physical, I'm being, you can't take physical things with you. <clears throat> and because when you get there, you'll find that you have nothing. But if you brew your spiritualness mm -hmm. and you take it with you, you're way ahead of the game, kind of. So you, you, so you can and you can't take it with you. You can take your spiritual with you, but you can't take your, um, you can you yeah. take you can take your growth with you but you can't yeah. take your things with you absolutely so that's yeah and the best investment we can make is in ourselves right mm -hmm. like growing and that mm -hmm. and that doesn't get lost exactly even intellectually that's that's something that we don't learn in christian churches for example they don't understand the importance of growing intellect yeah, yeah right Right? They don't emphasize that at all. They almost want you to grow backwards. <laughs> yes, that's true. Like science is something that's against religion and science against religion, this whole thing, right? Right. So, but it's exactly the opposite because we carry our intelligence to the spiritual world mm -hmm. and our intellectual growth and whatever we produce intellectually, scientifically, in arts and every, every realm we grow and we invest, we are going to carry with our spirit and to the other side and for the next uh, incarnations as well. And that's, uh, and that's something that's expected from us as human beings to grow both intellectually and morally. Yeah. And it's, it's fascinating when we see this on, on spiritualism because, yeah, it's really cool, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, David. Any 
Anything else? All mm -hmm. right, so let's do our final prayer. Uh, and we can have a little time before our next group. Are we done already? Uh, it's 10 to 5 if we don't have. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's 10 to 6. Uh, right. It's better for us to start a fresh chapter next week. Um, so it becomes more consistent. Okay, so dear God, spirits of the light or spiritual guides, thank you for this opportunity to be here together, learning from you, from uh, the gospel according with spiritism, from the gospel from Jesus, and from the enlightened spirits who help us to understand uh, what is the essence of the uh, teachings from God. What are the guidances that help us to grow and to develop into enlightened spirits? Help us to apply those things in our daily lives. Thank you for the strength and the, the guidance and the love, the unconditional love that you give us every day to uh, conquer our difficulties, our obstacles in our daily lives and live a life that is uh, pleasing to you. Help us to uh, be beams of light, of light everywhere we go and to bring comfort and healing to those around us. Thank you very much for your unconditional love. Amen. All right, so we are going to see each other next Monday, next Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Everybody is welcome to join us. If you wanted to join the group li live group, you can contact me through my uh, page on Facebook, uh, Revenant, or my face or my website, Revenant.world. Uh, it's free to all to join and everybody's welcome. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.